Okay, so first on your piece of loose leaf, we've been talking about dividing large numbers by one digit divisors. We're sticking to one digit divisors, but today we're focusing on the word problems. Okay, so go ahead and title your loose leaf. Let me get mine set up here. Okay, go ahead and title it Division Word Problems. And again, we're going to get our examples from the old notes page, the dividing three and four digit dividend notes. You'll see it in just a sec. Okay, so let's first start by breaking down our word pro or our division problems into its three parts. Technically four, we'll put four. Draw this at the top. You should have an idea of what's gonna go in these blanks. Who can help me fill one of those spots in, Reese? The first one is the dividend. Good job. Make my pen a little bit thicker. Dividend. Okay. Next, Nate. Divisor. Good job. Okay. Harper. Quotient. And what can be with the quotient, Abby? The remainder. the remainder. Okay, but today we're focusing on word problems. So we have to talk about how do we pick each of those pieces out when it's in a word problem. Who thinks they know one of those? How can I pick one of them out in the problem? Kendall? The total? Yeah, the dividend is always some kind of total. So when you draw an arrow down, this is a total. Now, in a word problem, it may not say there are a total of 13 girls, but it might just say there are 13 girls in a class. Okay, there are 13 girls on a team where you have to think, oh, that's giving me a total. It might not always use the word total, but it'll always give you that amount. Now, the divisor could be two different things. Reese, what's one? Okay, so it could be the number of groups. So it could be the number of groups or, Abby? How many are in each Yeah, the, how many are in each group? Can it be both? Can it be both of those in the same problem? Haley, what do you think? Can it be, can the divisor be both the number of groups and how many are in each group in the same problem? Who thinks yes? Who thinks no? Who has no idea? Okay. Who, okay, the answer is no, it can't be both. Why? Because if it, if it gave me the number of groups and how many are in each group, that's two different numbers. Is the divisor two different numbers? No. no. So what's the quotient? Harper? Oh. In a word problem, how do I find the quotient? Oh, you divide the dividend and the divisor. Okay, how do I decide what the quotient labels supposed to be? Brady? Okay, yeah, it's gonna, that's what it's going to represent, but you look at the, the question will tell you what your quotient is, right? You have to look at the question, and it's going to tell you what you're looking for. And like Brady said, though, it's going to be 
either the number of groups or how many are in each group. So if the divisor is the number of groups, then your question will be ask something about how many are in each group. It's whichever one of these isn't the divisor will be your quotient. Okay, and when we work through our word problems day, we're gonna, we're gonna write out our number sentence and then label each piece. We're gonna label it total, number of groups, or amount in each group. Okay, just to get you used to looking at those because it could be either of those. Okay, now just draw a squiggly line because we're gonna actually start on the word problems. Let's look at our notes page from the other day because we skipped the word problems. This is the same one you guys had, right? Yeah. This is your first one about Mr. Peters? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Mr. Peters has 80 sheets of colored paper. Seven of his students need the paper for a project. How many, that should say sheets of page paper, does each student get? Describe what the remainder in the problem means. We'll get to that. Okay, so let's go back to my work page. I'm going to title this example four because that's what it is on your worksheet. Oops, let me go up. Okay, so let's do example four. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and write out blank divided by blank equals blank. Which one's going to be blank even when I'm finished for now? Bryce? Yeah, the quotient, because that's what I'm going to have to find. So for the first one, I'm looking for a what? The dividend. How do I find a dividend in a word problem? Reese? Total of whatever it's talking about. Nate, what total is in that word problem? Uh, yeah, he has, does it say he has a total of 80 sheets? No, but could I easily add that word in and it still makes sense? Yeah, so let's write 80. Okay, and we're going to label that that's the total. In your homework tonight, you don't have a lot of problems that you're going to have to label what each piece means what each piece represents. Now, what is he doing with that total of 80 sheets, Bryson? Giving them to seven students. Okay, he's breaking it into seven, seven students. And what does the question ask? What does the question say? How many sheets does each student get? So we're going to have to label these parts. So this one, we said it's either the number of groups or the amount in each group. Which one is it for this one? If it, he's taking 80 sheets and he's dividing it equally among seven students. Harper, would that be the number of groups or the amount in each group? Yeah, that's the number of groups because I'm taking 80 sheets and I'm splitting it into seven equal groups. So that means my answer should represent, Brady? How many are in each yeah, how many are in each group or the number of sheets for each student. So I'm going to put amount, we'll start abbreviating, amount each group just because again you're going to have to label these on your homework so I'll let you shorten it a little bit. How do I find the amount in each group? Yeah I have to actually do the math so I'm going to go underneath 80 divided by 7. Sadie how many times is 7 going to 8? Um, once. once. So I'm going to put a 1 above it. 7 times 1 is 7. Subtract. Get 10. Finley, how many times is 7 going to 10? Once. Once. So I put a 1. 7. So I get 11 remainder 3. 
does it make sense to say, let's, the question says, how many sheets of paper does each student get? Does it make sense to say that each student gets 11 remainder sheet, three sheets of paper? No. 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 Parker, how many sheets does each student get? About no. Nope, we are not rounding. Haley? 11. Each student gets, so we're going to write this out. This is our answer sentence. Each student will get 11 sheets of paper period we have to say something about that three though what does that three mean Kendall yeah and there will be three sheets left over so actually I'm going to change that period to a comma and there will be three sheets left over. So to give you an example that will make sense to you, and again, if I can apply it to food, you guys usually understand. Raise your hand if you have siblings. Okay, put your hands down. If there are seven little Debbie brownies in a box and you only have one sibling, what's the problem? Not Brady? The by two. Yeah, if you're, if you're trying to share equally those little Debbie snacks, someone would get upset, right? Because it's not fair that Abby gets more. That's not fair. Okay? So usually your parents probably just take those. Or... No. or you can, you can split them in half, but that's the remainder, meaning if we shared it equally, you would get one, 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 you would get, and then there's just one left over. So you could split it equally, which we're going to get to giving answers as decimals and fractions, and that's still splitting that leftover equally, but right now we're just leaving it as a remainder, saying that there's just that one little Debbie Brownie left over, okay? Nobody gets it because we're not causing any fights. So here, every student gets 11 sheets, and then there's just three extras sitting on the side because they don't have enough to split it between all seven students, okay? Um, go ahead and look at the next word problem on your notes page. I believe it's on the back, example eight. I'm gonna go back to the notes page. Let's see here, back to the notes page. Okay, the environmental club is having a trash pickup day in six different counties on Saturday, October 18th. There are 130 people signed up to volunteer. On trash pickup day, they work in groups of four. No more than four people can join a group. How many groups will there be? Interpret the remainder. now. This one also gives us extra information. We'll start working here just instead of me flipping back and forth so I can keep the problem up. First, we know the dividend is always some kind of what? Total. What is a total that I'm working with in this problem, Sophia? What's a total I'm working with in this problem? So there, that just tells me that there's six counties participating in trash pickup day. Let's look at the question, okay? It wants to know how many groups there will be is the question that I'm looking for. So Bryson, what am I splitting into groups? The 130 people. Yeah, the people is what I'm having to break into groups. So this 130 is going to be my, what do we call it though? Dividend. Dividend. I'm going to write it on here. If you guys want, you can go ahead and write it on your loose leaf, and I'll copy it over there in just a second. 130 is my total. What am I breaking it into? Kendall? Four. Why am I breaking it into four? 
Yeah, that's how many people are in each group. And then I'm going to put equals blank. OK, now we're gonna, I'm going to go to the other paper real quick. Oh, get rid of that. Go here. Scroll up. OK, and this one's example eight, right? OK, example eight. 130 divided by 4 equals blank. And we already said this 130 is our what? Total. And if we wanted to be specific, we could say total people or total volunteers. What is the, the divisor in this one? What is the divisor, Bryce? The number of groups or the amount in each group are our options. And you guys have that written at the top, so it'll always be one of those two. So does four represent the number of groups that I'm creating or the amount of people in each group? Is that, does it say we are splitting them into four equal groups? Sadie? The amount That's what the four is? Haley? Yeah, it says that they're splitting it into groups of four, meaning that they're putting four people in each group. So the amount of people in each group is four. So that four is the amount in each group. So what is the quotient going to represent? Harper? Yeah, the number of groups. And what does the question say? How many groups are there? Yeah, the question even says, how many groups will there be? So that means we're looking for the number of groups. Okay, and we'll worry about the rest of those words in just a second. Let's go ahead and divide this out. Who can walk me through this? Caden, help me out. What do I do first? So four can't go into one. Okay, four can't go into one. So you have to put one under, under one and three. Okay, so yep, I'm going to take it into 13. How many times does four go into 13, Caden? Three. three times. Good job. What is three times four? Twelve. Twelve. Okay, Max, take over for me. Okay. 13 minus 12 is 1. Keep going. Drop my 0. Keep going. Okay. How many times can that happen? Twice. 4 times 2 is 8. I'll go ahead and finish it out. 10 minus 8 is 2. Remainder 2. So I'm going to write that up here. 32. Remainder 2 is my answer. Okay, but that's not my answer sentence answer. Okay, the answer to the division sentence is 32 remainder 2, but that's not my answer. Why is that not my answer, Brady? Because it's skewed over. Yeah, so that means in this problem, 130 volunteers show up, and they, they're not allowing more than four people in a group. So this says that there will be 32 groups with two people left over. If these two people showed up to volunteer, are they going to turn them away? What are they going to do, Brant? Yeah, they're just going to have one group of two. Like in the classroom sometimes. Sometimes are you in a group that's smaller than the other groups? Why? Yeah, and we're not going to say, oh, you two just sit this one out. Okay, you just form a new group that just has less people. So how many groups do we actually have, Maya? 33 groups, OK? So that is the answer to our division sentence. Is that an important answer you think I'm going to be looking for? Yes, but then when you write your answer sentence, you answer the question that is asked in the word problem. The word problem says, how many groups will there be? So there will be. Thirty-three groups. 
If you want to be very specific, how can we add to that? That says something about 32 remainder 2. Bryce? And so there will be 33 groups. One group of just two people. So he said something about the remainder. What's that 32 represent, Maya? Yeah, and 32 groups of four. Or you could say 32 full groups, since they said groups of four. So one group of just two people and 32 groups of four people. See how that's very, very specific? How we're not leaving any room to um, interpret it differently? OK, is there one more word problem on your paper? Okay, let's go ahead and do the next one. What example number is it? And I'll go ahead and get mine set up. What is it? 12, okay. Example 12. Okay, example 12. There are 312 fish at the aquarium in three different fish tanks. Each tank has the same number of fish. How many fish are in each tank? Write an equation to find the unknown and then find the unknown. Let's go back. What was my total? Dom, what was my total here? And example 12. 312 fish. 312 fish. OK, so 312. And I'm going to go ahead and label that that's my total. What am I breaking those 312 into, Maya? Three different fish tanks. Three different fish tanks, or did it say four? Three? OK. Three different fish tanks. And then I'm looking for the number of fish in each tank. So what is this three representing? Is it the amount of groups or the amount in each group? Brady? The amount of groups. Yeah, that's the amount of groups. So I'm looking for, oh wait, hold on. Let's word that, it, what, the amount of groups, let's just call it the number of groups just so we don't get confused, we'll be consistent. Sorry, I should have worded that different. Let me get rid of amount. Because it tells me the number of groups. It tells me how many different fish tanks. And that's where if you have, if you're sorting it into groups, I can say, okay, one goes here, one goes here, one goes here, and just sort them into those three fish tanks. So what is my quotient representing in this problem? If that one is the number of groups, Reese? Yeah, the amount in each group. Okay, and if you look at the question, it says, how many fish are in each tank? So the words are kind of there. I'm just trying to get you used to seeing them and finding them. Now what do we have to do? I have to divide it out to find my actual quotient. So 312, oops. Divided by 3. Dane, how many times does 3 go into 3? Once. Once. Let's put a 1 there. Bryson, what do I do next? Drop the 1. Okay, drop the 1. Bryson, how many times does 3 go into 1? Zero. zero, so I put a zero at the top, and then what do I have to do, Bryson? Drop the two. Drop the two. So I should see a what? I should see a double drop, which means I should have what somewhere in my answer? Zero. A zero. Maya, how many times three go into 12? Four. four. Three times four is 12. So this one I don't have any left over, so my answer is just 104. Am I done? No, why not, Jude? 
Okay, Nate, give me a good answer sentence for this. The question says, how many fish are in each tank? Good job. There are 104 fish in each tank. Period. Okay, what you're going to do for homework is very similar to what we did right here. Okay? I'm going to show you your homework paper. The problems are in your book but they're kind of all over the place. So I put them all listed on one piece of paper because as we did the homework over division, we skipped a lot of the word problems. So now we're going back and catching some of those word problems. Let me get to... Come on, be a little faster. Okay, so your homework paper will look like this. Okay, it says write the number sentence, label the parts of the sentence. What are our three parts that we're going to label? Do we label them uh, divisor, dividend, and quotient? What do you think I'm wanting you to label them, Harper? Okay, so total amount in each group and what's the last one? Parker? How many amounts? We have amount in each group. How many and the number of groups. Okay, so for each of these problems, so the first three you're going to do are on page 174, problem 7, 8, and 9. When you get this, I'm going to leave this up on the board. I just want to make sure I say it. Um, you will have, and I'm making this up, don't write this, 176 divided by 4 equals 22 remainder 8, which can't even be a remainder because it's bigger than our divisor, okay? But under that, you would have total, okay? Let's just say this is the number of groups, which makes this one the amount in each group, okay? And then I'll just put there are... 22 people in each group with two left over, with two left out. Sad face. We don't like to leave people out, okay? So in the boxes, you will have your number sentence, what each number represents, and your answer sentence. Where do you think you're going to do your work? Yeah, over on the side where it says scratch work area. If you do the first two problems and you're like, hey, I'm out of room, what could you pull out? Loose leaf. Does that make sense? Okay, so you will have the rest of the time to work. And I told you I was going to leave this up, but I lied because I can't. I got to scroll. Um, I'll put it back up once I stop recording. So on page 174, you're going to have problems 7, 8, and 9. It's written right here at the top. On page 178, what two problems are you going to do? 14 and 15. And again, this scratch work area might be a little small. So if you run out of space, just do it on loose leaf. Put page 182, 16, 17. Page 206, 4 and 5. So it's 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9 problems. Okay, but you have about 15 minutes of class time to get started on it. Questions? Okay. Let me pass out your paper real quick. If you want, you can go ahead and get your book open, page 174.